All right. So, yeah, I am recording again. So, I am ready when you are. Okay. So, the first question is, I guess, like, when you're first explaining my econ to somebody, what is kind of, like, what I know it's case by case, but what is, like, a general, like, thing of how you explain my econ? So, um, great question. So, the first thing I ask them is, well, I guess it depends on the type of posts. You have... Um, you have a, a couple of different, my, my econ basically has three different um, anchors, what I would call it. If you think of a shopping mall, you have anchor stores, right? You have Ross, you have JCPenney, Sears. Those are called anchor stores because they're the reason why you come to the mall, right? You usually don't go to the mall because you want to go to the mall. You go to the mall because you're going to a store and then you're there at the mall, right? So anchor stores are what brings you to into the, the, the place. My econ has three, in my opinion. One is do-it-yourself credit repair. Now, there's other companies out there that will send, and I think we've talked about this before, if you have negative items on your credit, you can send dispute letters to get those negative items removed. My econ provides four rounds of dispute letters. Each round escalates it a further and further and further every every dispute letter does something different to get those items removed you might get it removed after the first might be the third might be the fourth you won't know until you send all four rounds of dispute letters mm -hmm. now what companies will do is they'll send those letters on your behalf i know that well i can't say the name because i don't know where this recording is going um, but let's just say there's a company out there that's known for sending letters out on your behalf but they won't send the next sequence of dispute letters mm -hmm. and you're, and you're paying them a hundred dollars a month to do this for you. And they're not sending the next letter to get stuff off. Keep in mind, every business wants repeat customers. Every business wants repeat customers, right. doctors, pharmaceutical companies, post office, you know, every business wants a repeat customer. So, um, I like my econ because it gives you the power to take care of your credit yourself. Mm. If you pay a company to dispute stuff for you and they get removed, your credit is by default going to go up because the native items aren't, aren't bringing it down anymore. If in four or five, six years, you want something removed again, you got to pay someone to do it for you oh. again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My econ, it's a personal finance company. It's designed to empower you to take care of your own stuff. I am a big proponent of you, of people being empowered to take care of their own life. And so that's why I like my econ. Once you have the skill set, you have it forever. You've got three kids. You can, when, they're, when your kids are in their teens, you can start teaching them about credit and how to get good credit. So by the time they're 18, 19, they're 20, they can have credit scores in the high 700s, 800s. So if your 19 or 20 year old wants to go get a loan so they can start a business or buy some real estate, they can do that. There's kids out there that go buy real estate and have residual income at 20, 21 because their credit score is in the high 700s. Mm -hmm. Remember a high credit score can a lot of times carry more weight with a bank than having a lot of money, cash, liquid yeah. in the bank. Yeah. So, as they say, cash is king, but credit rules the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, so I, and I'll be the first to admit, I grew up with um, mentors who were multimillionaires that always taught me to stay out of debt, pay cash for everything. So I don't have, I don't not, I don't not have bad credit. I don't have credit. <laughs> because my car is paid for. I bought my car cash in 2006. I'm doing like the Warren Buffett where I've had the same car for uh, 13 years. Yeah. And I love it. Like I don't want another car. It runs. <laughs> it's a 96 Buick. It's like it's the most comfortable vehicle I've ever had. So, yeah. you know, that's how um, – now it's not hard to build credit because I don't have credit. I don't have anything negative in my – in my account. I went to college. I went to college for free. I had a scholarship. I I don't buy 
It, I don't buy a lot of things that I don't need. I don't buy depreciating assets like a house. I know it's in our society, buying a house is one of those things where it's like you're expected to do. Um, now there's some conflicting thoughts on this, but um, I believe a house is a liability. You know, a house is not an asset unless you are rent, buying a house and then renting it out because now it has cash flow coming in. If you buy a house and live in it, in my opinion, that's a liability. Now, some people will say, well, if you buy the house and then it appreciates in value and then you sell it, that's an asset. I would disagree. I would say that's considered a capital gain. It still doesn't make it an asset. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. Yeah. I rent a house here in, I live in like Paradise Valley, Phoenix area. My water heater, or my water heater went out about a month ago, three weeks to a month ago. I did not have to pay a damn thing because I have a landlord and it's their responsibility to pay for stuff like that when it breaks. Oh, I see what you're saying. When you buy a house, you're responsible for everything. Some people will buy a house at, you know, $100,000 and they'll sell it at $300,000. Say, oh, I made $200,000. Yeah, but you put $100,000 into your home. Really you did not, you did. Exactly. People don't yeah. think like that because society teaches them. Remember, everything you were taught in, college, in, in school was, is designed to keep you broke. It's designed to keep you poor. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you were taught to sit down, shut up, do what I tell you to do. That's basically how most parents do their kids. Yeah. And then you went to a school system from a teacher that said, sit down, shut up, do what I tell you to do. And then you went into a job force that your boss, sit down, shut up, do what I tell you to do. And then when you're 65, you retire and you've never been taught how to think for yourself. That's you ever, good, yeah. You've ever seen those, those old couples at a restaurant and they're like, what are you gonna get? Well, I don't know. What are you gonna get? Well, I yeah. don't know. Because they've never been taught how to make a decision. They've never been taught how to think on their own. Their whole life they've been taught how to sit down, shut up, and do what I tell you to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're going into um, some deep stuff. But so, um, yeah, I think it's important that you use those critical thinking skills. If everyone is going out and buying a house, that may not be the best investment for you. And I'm actually working with a realtor right now. I'm partnering with a realtor because um, obviously real estate and credit goes hand in hand. You yeah. have to have a, a, a bare minimum credit score to buy a house. And then the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate on your loan. So there's a tip for you. If you know any real estate agents or if you want to partner with some, it may not be a bad idea to partner with some. Say, hey, I do credit repair. Your real estate agent. I was thinking about that. Yeah, that we somebody can, says that my church. So yeah, I highly recommend it. If they go, if they come across someone that that can't a can't a that can't get approved for a loan for a house, hey, you know, I have a I have a partner named Sterling that does credit repair. Um, is Sterling your last name or your first name? My first name. Okay, um, so I think your your Facebook said Sterling Elizabeth. So I, I guess I need to make sure that. That's your first name. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's um, people go and they buy houses, and then, you know, you've got a, anything that breaks in your house, you're responsible for. And then um, you've got property taxes. Here's a, here's a, here's a here's a secret that most people don't think about. You don't mm -hmm. really own your house. The bank owns your house because they're the one who bought the house right you get a loan from a bank to buy a house it's not your house it's the bank's house and so you pay that off right right and then if you happen to pay it off don't pay your property taxes you'll find out real quick whose house that is that's good yeah see that's pe true. people don't don't use this they they I never even thought about that that's so true yeah <laughs> You just rent like condos or lofts or apartments or whatever you were, but you're in like a lease where you're renting or do you rent like a house still and then you just don't have a landlord or like how do you do it? So I, so here in Phoenix, 
I rent a house. I have a three bedroom, two bath house here in Paradise okay. Valley. And that's because like I, I worked in property management for almost three years in Seattle. I worked, I was a leasing agent at a 520 unit property uh, apartment complex. Uh -huh. um, I'm not opposed to living in an apartment. I just don't want to. I like my, I like my freedom. I like it. I like the, I like having a house. So if I can yeah. rent a house instead of an apartment, that's what I'm going to do. So okay. I rent a house here in, in Phoenix and then, um, but like if I ever bought a house, I would not live in it unless I had to. I know there are certain loans, like first buyer homes, like they have it so that you have to live in the house for a year. Um, honestly, I'd probably still rent it out. <laughs> I would have it as my address, but I would still probably re be renting somewhere else and then just rent out my house and just have residuals. Okay, okay. Um, but um, yeah. yeah, like li buying a house and living in it, like I'm a li the by definition, a liability is something that takes money out of your household. It's something that that you're paying for. And that's that's another reason why my econ is so powerful because as soon as you have a my econ business, even if you're just doing it for the credit repair, you're now allowed to take certain tax deductions. Part of your house is tax deductible. Your cell, your cell phone bill is now a tax write-off. Your um, your internet that you pay for at at your home, if you have internet, that's a tax write-off. Like you have your travel, your food. If you and I met at Starbucks and you decided to get food or coffee, not only is the travel to Starbucks tax deductible, but any meals you buy during that meeting is tax deductible as well. Now a lot of people say, oh well, there's there's loopholes in the tax code. No, the tax code is designed for that purpose because as a business owner, you take certain risks. Employees have little to no risk in having a job. If you get fired or the company goes under, honestly, it's an inconvenience, but you could just go out and get another job. Mm -hmm. If you own a multi-million dollar company, understand that A, you probably had to, you probably aren't paying for that yourself. You probably have investors. You have people that paid money or bank that gave you money to start a business. So if that business goes under, you probably have to declare bankrupt. Investors still want their money back. You have to buy materials. You have to buy machinery. You know, an employee that's sitting there working at a computer, you bought the computer for them to work on. Like you have things that you will lose if you if you lose your business. So the tax code is written for entrepreneurs to incentivize them to go out and take those risks to be an entrepreneur. With my econ, do people have it like, you know when they're in insurance agents and they have like their own firm? With my econ, do people kind of do something like that where they actually have like an office? Is that like something you can do? You can, but I don't see, I don't see you really needing to because to do it yourself, credit repair. In the back office, there's there, there's step by step videos. All the documents are in there. Um, like it would just be. Um, so the the thing I love about online businesses is the very low cost of overhead. Okay. I don't pay. I don't have any employees right now. I have I have very little overhead in my businesses. I don't have to pay rent or electricity or utilities on an office building. Like it would just, it wouldn't, there really wouldn't be a, a reason to. Um, and, and to be honest with you, even if I did, I would try to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. Meaning I would want to own the company, but not run the company. Like okay. I would love to own a gym, but I don't want to, I don't want to have any, I don't want to do anything with the day to day operations. I don't want to fire or hire. I won't do any of that. I just want my check every month for being a part owner or owner of the gym. And then I'll hire someone else to take, I'll hire a manager or a CEO or someone to take care of everything else for me. With my econ, when you're filling out the information for your credit, is it hard, is it like complicated or is like anybody literally can do it? Anybody can do it. Like it literally is the, I had a woman who was, well, I just don't have the time you know, is there, isn't there somebody at the company that can do this for me? And I'm just like, 
that's like going into McDonald's and saying, can you just make me a pizza? I mean, come on. I know you have someone in the back that can just make a pizza. It's like, that's not what we do. <laughs> there isn't someone at my econ office that can just send in your own stuff. So the, the documents are already filled out. Like everything is filled out already. All you're doing mm -hmm. is putting in your name and your information and then dropping in your mailbox and sending it on its way. Like that's how simple it is. How long do people would like usually, does it usually take roughly for people to start kind of seeing stuff if it does come off? 30 to 45 days. And really? Before they start seeing, in, yep, before they start seeing increases in their credit. Now, is it permanently removed? Um, for a lot of things, yeah, it's permanently removed. Okay. What are like the type of things that like you personally have seen like removed besides like the medical records? So the biggest things for most people are going to be their medical collections um, as well as student loans. Those are going to be the two biggest things that... How do you do it? Why do you like how, why and how do you get a student loan off your credit? Like I know the backgrounds of like the HIPAA with the medical. How does it work with the student loan? Um, I don't know. I've never, I've never had, I've never had a student loan before in my entire life. I've only paid for college myself or I've had scholarships. So, um, but I will say this, I've worked in the student loan industry on two occasions. I worked um, for a company in the early, two, in 2000 and, uh, 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. on the funding and consolidation side. And I've worked as a bill collector for the Department of Education, meaning I called people who had defaulted student loans. Um, and I will, I will tell you right now, most people don't know how college really works. And if they did, they would be infuriated. So really? not every student loan works this way, but a lot of student loans are federally insured. What that means is if you go to college, you take out a loan, you can't pay the loan back. You default on your loan. The federal government then steps in and they purchase the loan. Either way, the college still gets paid. College doesn't care one way or another. They're still getting paid. Now, if you take out a, they may not get their full, let's say, $60,000, you know, for a four-year degree. They might get only twenty or $30,000. But when you have a, an asset that doesn't depreciate, like you're, you're, they're not, you know, their degree doesn't depreciate. Matter of fact, they increase prices and it's at university. Tuition goes up every year. Why? Because they can. They have a they have an asset that you can't put on a shelf that doesn't appreciate. So here's what happens. You take out a loan, no matter what, the school's gonna get paid. They may not get paid the full amount, but they're still getting paid, so they're still happy. Right. Now the federal government owns your loan. Student loans are one of the only loans, I think it might be the only loan that is never forgiven within reason there are some forgiveness programs out there but what a lot of people don't don't know is that those are for very specific industries a lot yeah. of times it's if you go into education they'll forgive your loan or if you go into law you can have your loan oh, forgiven, or, okay. or, or and medical but you have to be in medical school working in the medical field you have to be in law school working in loss in like a law firm. Okay, okay. And you have then that there are, right. Like and then there are some provisions for you to have your loan forgiven. But for most people, the only way to get your loan removed is pay it off, you die, or you can prove that it was taken out fraudulently. Mm -hmm. Those are only three ways. And so, and, and there are federal assistance programs that help people bring their loans out of default. So, and that's typically based on your income and your family size. So there were yeah. some people I would call and I would say, listen, your loan is in default. I can get you on a program that it's $5 a month. You have to do the program for nine months. After nine months, your loan will come out of default. It'll come off your credit. It'll be as if it never happened and the reason it's nine months is because the government wants to may see you make a good effort of actually making consistent payments because some people are like well can i just pay the 50 bucks now i'm like well no it's, you're gonna do it over nine months because they want to yeah, see yeah i remember make. doing something like that yeah so um 
yeah, there, there's, there's so much with, with that that people don't realize. There is something called the tax offset, which basically means that it's a, it's a random system. <laughs> so every day, 365 days of the year, they randomly select people to go on this list. If you're chosen for the tax offset list, it means that any federal income coming to your household, the government can take and put it towards your student loan. So your federal tax return, um, Medicare, Social Security, um, and they will take all of them. I'm dead serious. And once you are on this list, you do not yeah. you are on it forever until you bring your loan out of default. I have talked to people who have not had a tax return in 20 years. That's crazy. Not only that, but because, get this, if I call you on Wednesday and you yeah. give me shit on the phone, next Friday, your your wages will be garnished. Yeah. No way. If I if I choose to go that route as a as an agent. Because it's because it's federal debt, not private, I don't have to have a judge sign off for me to garnish your wages. Wow. That's sneaky. I can't tell you how many people have called like, yeah, you guys are garnishing my wages now. I'm like, yeah, well, we tried to take care of this, you know, a couple weeks ago and you you didn't want to. So yeah, it, it's yeah, you you never want your loan to go into default. That's crazy. But I did learn some good vernacular when you call someone and and they try to give you their excuse for why they couldn't pay or no, I'm in deferment, blah blah blah. Which is another thing when you're when you're in deferment for your two years, they don't let you know when that time is up. <laughs> like you have to be right. an adult and keep track of it. There's a lot of people that don't know their two years is up and now they're in default because they're not paying their loan. Um, and so you're like, oh, well, I thought I was in deferment. And one of the greatest lines I've, I've ever read from a script is, you know, I can't speak intelligently about that, but here's what the reality, here's the situation. Because I, I can't speak intelligently about whatever your excuse is, but I'm calling for this reason. And this is what we need to get done, right? So. Um, I enjoyed working there for the, t for the short amount of time I was there. Uh -huh. I learned a lot. Um, yeah, I learned a lot about the, the things that most people don't see and don't understand about how yeah. college works and, and stuff like that. So when What's you see happening? tuition going up every year, it, that's, that's, it's because that, that is federally assured income for them. That's crazy. It's all really a system, like seriously. Mm -hmm. um, with the student loan, the higher the student loan, do you see like it typically takes longer for it to be removed off? So, um, so here's the thing with student loans. Everybody's going to be very different. And that's one thing with, with my econ that you have to be careful is you can't guarantee results. Um, right. You can only just show like, hey, this is what I've seen with other people. And there's no guarantee student loans will come off. Um, uh -huh. and it's very possible that it won't come off. Um, and so all you can do is send screenshots of people who have had it removed. So you can show proof like, hey, these people have had their stuff removed. It's just everyone's background is so radically different. Mm -hmm. There's different types of loans too. You know, some are fairly assured, some aren't. You know, some loans are guaranteed by the government and some are private loans. So you can Does it kind you, of depend on like what school you go to? Uh, it depends on the type of loan. So you have okay. some, some are private loans, some are, are loans um, funded by a bank, some are funded by the government, some are, you know, it just depends. So it's hard to say, um, okay. but you have, but my econ has everything you would ever need to get them removed. My econ provides it for you. And if okay. you go through all that and can't get it removed, then it's just, it wasn't going to come off no matter what. But, um, the, 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 but at the very least, the goal is to start creating income so that you can pay it off and be done with yeah. it. Yeah. Which brings me to the second anchor, unless you have a unless you have a question. Just really quickly, mm -hmm. how how far in between do you send each letter? Um so basically what you would do is you would send a letter and then you're gonna get a response back. 
Um, if you don't get a response back, see, because companies have, they legally have to respond back to you within a certain amount of time. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't gone through all the training only because I don't have any negative items to dispute. And everything is already in the back office. Like, it's do it yourself. So, like, I don't, I probably should, but I admittedly haven't gone through everything because I, would, right. Like, I, I, I don't learn about things that I don't really need to learn about. You know, um, if someone really cares, they can, like, do their own research. But from what I understand is that when you send a dispute letter, the company has legally a certain amount of time to respond to you. Um, because basically you're one of the things that you can do is you're basically having them validate that the debt is yours. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they can't prove the debt's yours, they have to remove it. Okay. That's one of the ways that you get out of, of having medical collections removed off your credit is they have to validate that the that they have that is yours and if they're using medical records that's a hipaa violation i had a, a what was that it's off top it's a hipaa violation to remove it yeah because your 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 medical records can't be shared unless you give written authorization um other types of debt the same thing you have to prove to me that this debt is mine if you can't you have to remove it I have a question with the medical records, you know, like sometimes in the doctor's office, he says like, if you don't pay this account is going to go to like a collections agency mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Is that an instance where like you're kind of giving the information to you or no, because that's, I don't know. So here's the thing. You can be sent to collections for non-payment, but if they're going to validate your, that it's actually yours with medical records. Oh, so, okay. I see. So there there could be situations where maybe you have a medical collection and they don't use your medical records to say we know it's you then then they don't have to remove it but if you right. say you have to not only verify but you have to validate that this is mine that th i'm this person and they say well yes we know this is you because your medical records state blah 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 then it becomes a HIPAA violation and if they don't remove it then you can press it further that that's the cool thing about those 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 violations because then you're, you're basically saying you have violated hipaa you have to have this removed otherwise i'm going to take legal action have Unders. you ever seen anybody who has to take legal action on something that was um that was good that they like could, that they should have removed most people most com most most collection agencies aren't going to go through the process to fight something like that i mean they're really they're just it's easier for them Here's the thing about collection agencies. A lot of them buy debt. They buy collections from other companies. And then they try to collect on them. And if they can't, they just write it off as bad debt. So they want to collect, but it, it, but if they have to write it off as bad debt, it's not like it's a big deal. Okay. So what they'll do is one company will say, I mean, I mean it happens. <laughs> they'll have, I've got you know, $5 million worth of collections um we can't collect on them maybe you'll have a better you know better luck we'll sell you these people's information for three million dollars so another company will will pay three million dollars for your private information so now one collection agency is not going to call you anymore it'll be a different collection agency and now that collection agency is now calling on you trying to collect your debt Okay. And if they can't collect on it, they just write it off. So if they have, if they violated HIPAA, it's going to be cheaper and easier for them, less of a headache for them to just write off the debt and have it removed than it is for them to sit there and actually have violated HIPAA. Because whenever a company gets a legal notice, keep in mind, it takes money for them to even send anything over to an attorney to look at something, make sure it's all legit. If I, if I, if, um, as a, when I worked in property management, if we were going to evict somebody, we have to, it costs our attorney would charge us to send legal notices to them. Right. So yeah. companies don't want to have to involve their legal department if they don't have to. Yeah. So if you send them a notice saying, Hey, you have violated HIPAA and I am going to pursue legal you know, ramifications, if this isn't taken care of, 
they've got to send that to their attorney and then the attorney's going to bill them for that. And if the attorney says, uh, yeah, you should probably just get this removed or yeah, it's, it's fine. You don't have to do that. Then they have to let you know that, yeah, we're not going to remove it. Cool. Well, then guess what? Now I'm going to send you round two of my dispute letters. Now they have to take that and they have a certain amount of time to respond and they got to send it back to their legal and say, Hey, we got this back. What is round two? Like, what is that like letter? Like the validation? The first one is to verify and the second one is to validate? Um, so the, there's, um, with the medical ones, I think there's like two or three, I think with the medical, so you have your normal four rounds of validate of, of dispute letters. And then when it comes to like the, the medical, they have their own specific dispute letters that you would send in sequence. I think there's mm-hmm. three of them. And again, okay. my econ provides everything for you. All you're doing is putting your name, sending okay. it in the mail. Okay. It's already, it's already filled out with all the legal n- mumble jumbo. Like everything is literally already filled out for you. Like it is the most legit. Now I'll be honest, you, it might be possible for you to go to Google and say, I need validation letter for this. I don't know how good that is. All I know is that my econ has been in business for 15 years. Their stuff works. Sometimes you, yeah. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Do you know, like, do you know what the what I be what Stokes and Curry were doing before this? Um, that I don't know. So you don't know about like the bankruptcy and stuff? Um, for did you say Ivan Curvy? Yeah, like, so I don't know. I like to look at the reviews because that's what posts like like the like bad side of it because most people ask you those questions, so I want to know like a response. Mm-hmm. And I was looking somewhere, and it said that they used to work for another company similar to my econ that okay. filed bankruptcy in 2003. And based off of that transaction, then my econ started. So okay. I just wanted to know, like, has anybody ever, like, I guess nobody ever asked that deep into the company? Because, you know, people are, like, going to do the review and stuff. And so, like, I just want to know what rebuttals I would say back to certain things. So I'm assuming sure. nobody's ever asked about anything like that. So, so I'll answer that in two different ways. Okay. Um, number one, uh, the company has been around for 15 years. So obviously they're stable. They have cash flow. They're not in any danger of going under currently. And that doesn't detract from the information that they're providing, right? The do-it-yourself, yeah. uh, the do-it-yourself credit repair, obviously it works. And the income shifting, obviously that works. Like all of their products and services, they work. So okay. even if they file bankruptcy, um 2013 was 16 years ago that has nothing to do with the company that they are today okay um, i didn't really ask you anything about their background or anything it as in so well, what we basically do is we do affiliate marketing it doesn't matter to me what their background is as long as the company looks okay looks like they've been in business for a long time now if it's yeah. a brand new if it's a brand new company that just started like a year ago depending on how much it costs to get started because there's a lot of affiliate marketing companies out there some are very cheap to jump into 20 30 50 dollars if i lose that money it's really not a big deal and as you start to get more around wealth and success you start to be able to see what companies are legit and what aren't you have probably seen on your wall the 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 cash in the mail business um like you've probably seen some weird stuff on your wall some of those yeah. aren't legit businesses so some what just like a chef someone that goes to culinary school is going to start to recognize really really good ingredients for food as opposed to really crappy ingredients but you have yeah. to be exposed when the longer you're around it the more you start to see i've been around success and business for so long i can look at a business and like and look and say there's no product, there's no service. Every business has to have a product or service, otherwise it's a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme. So when you look at the product or service of my econ, obviously it works, there's people that have success. Now, <laughs> the second way to answer that question is, people, and I don't wanna say broke people, but people that aren't going where in life are gonna think of every excuse under the sun to not do something. Okay. And they will, uh, it's just the, <laughs> I, I, I've been in business since 2000 and 
2003, 2004 is when I started my first business, my first like network marketing company. Okay. So I've, I have heard every, re, every excuse, every mm -hmm. rebuttal. I've heard everything. You know, yeah. I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of companies come up and disappear. Oh, get in my juice business. We've got this amazing um, juice from, and it's made from these magic berry from the jungles of, you know, Minnetonka and the, and, and Africa, and it's going to cure all these things. Like I've seen, there's nothing you can show me that I haven't seen. There's nothing that I haven't experienced. There's nothing I haven't been asked. You know, is this a pyramid scheme? You know, is this a scam? You know, oh, I read this negative thing online. I've heard it all. At the end of the day, some people, some people, not most, but some people legitimately have a question and you can answer their question and then they're ready to move forward. But 95% of people are so skeptical that they're looking for any reason to not do something. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you, if you Google, I hate mother Teresa, there's like, there's millions of, of hits on Google for, I hate mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, if, if, if negative, if reading about negative stuff online affects your purchasing, then don't shop at Walmart. Walmart has hundreds if not thousands of websites talking about how horrible Walmart is. You know how many lawsuits Walmart has pending right now? Right. And so like you have to, sometimes you have to be real with people with where they're at. Oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to use my econ because they, you know, I read some negative stuff online. Okay. Well don't go to McDonald's. Don't pay your electricity <laughs> so bill. Yeah. Don't pay your phone bill. Verizon is one of the largest companies. They have pending lawsuits all the time. Like, excuse my French, it's bullshit. It's a bullshit excuse mm -hmm. for, for, for them not wanting to do it. Because most people aren't, don't want, don't have the guts to say, yeah, I just, I'm, the reason why people don't do what we do is ignorance, fear, or doubt. They just don't know. They don't think they can do it. And they have no self-esteem in themselves. They just, they, they're afraid of what people are going to think. So um, if you, the longer you're in sales, the longer you realize that the rebuttals people give you are not the real excuse. As you, they're usually two or three. So, oh, I don't have any time or I don't have any money. Those are usually going to be the two biggest excuses people give you. Uh, and sometimes that's true. Um, but I don't have time that I don't believe. Everyone has time. Um, I mean, I've had, I've met people that literally block out their day in 15 minute increments. Then you can have a discussion about, I don't have time, but most people work a 40 hour work week and then they go watch eight hours of TV and tell you that they don't have time. When I lived yeah. in Jamaica, I had a gentleman, I had two guys. There was a, there was a doctor in Jamaica who worked 12 to 15 hour days, seven days a week, no vacations, no days off. And he still found time to build something on the side. Tell me how that works. One of my mentors was got involved in the business. Um, he was in medical school as a nose, nose, throat, nose, throat, and um, ear um, yeah. for surgery, working like insane amount of hours because in medical school you have like classes plus you're in the hospital working like and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah and you know you're working literally you know 16 18 hours a day still finds time to build a business i had a gentleman in jamaica who um he was in a band he was a music teacher and then at nights he would play piano in the hotel where i did my meetings um it was a uh um, I don't think it was in Hilton. It was a Wyndham Hotel in uh, okay. Kingston, Jamaica. And you know, he would say, Matt, I don't work three jobs because I want to. I work three jobs because I have to. He still found time to build something part time on the side. And he's got a family. So when I come back to the States and I've got someone saying, Oh, I'm busy. Dude, you work 40 hours a week. You are not busy. You don't know what busy is. Yeah. When I when I did um, sales for the Seattle, when I did sales for the Mariners, I did have two days off. But when I did um, outside sales for a company called Clearwire, we sold wireless broadband internet. 
I was working 80, 90 hours a week, I could still find time to do stuff that I wanted to do if I really wanted to do it. And I was exhausted because we're out pay, p- pounding the pavement every day. Like you're out walking business to business every day. It's a, it's a grueling, exhausting existence. Yeah. So you just have to, you have to look at the intent of why they're asking. A company's bankruptcy 16 years ago has nothing to do with their credit repair abilities nowadays. That's a bullshit yeah. question for them just not wanting to do something. And then with that being said, when someone asks you if it's a pyramid scheme or scam, how do you respond to that? So that would bring us to the third pillar of my econ. You have credit repair. People that just want their credit repair, they'll never ask those type of questions. They just want to know how much is it and how long is it going to take to get my credit fixed. Those are really the only questions they're going to ask. So do you just give them the price and say typically you start seeing stuff after like about 30 to 45 days? Um, I'd say depending on what's in there, you can, you can expect to see results in 30 to 45 days. I don't know for sure. Um, but you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. It's 35 okay. bucks a month. Like it's, it's like a dollar something a day. Yeah. There's no contract. You can cancel anytime. Okay. Do they pay the $50 up front or is that just for people who want to take this book to a business? So here's the, oh, so here's an update that just happened the other day. Right now we have what's called freedom pricing. Meaning you get to choose your price, either $99.95, $49.95, or $19.95. You get 100% commission. So if you today sold, um, um, you know, my econ for $100, your first sale is considered like a, um, a training sale. After that, every sale you're getting 100% commission. So you can choose a price at $19 bucks if you want, $20. Bucks. You can choose $100 if you want. But that's only until um, next Saturday. Next okay. Saturday, they're just they're going back to forty nine ninety five as the base price. Okay. So that's starting on Saturday. So if you have a lot of people that want to get started, that's a good push. Like, listen, Saturday it's going back up to fifty bucks. Right now it's twenty. Okay. Like, you remember the day of me, which number is not like the other? Would you rather pay twenty or fifty? It, 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 you know, it's. If you're looking for business builders, I would just go ahead and just do 20 bucks for as many people as possible. Like I'll pre, I'll be promoting it for the 20 this week, just to get people. So in after this life. week, will it go back up to the 50? If they even started for 20, will it stay at 20 just until it goes back up? Um. So once they pay their 20, the next month, 30 days from then, they'll pay 34.95 until they cancel. Okay, it'll be the 34.95 always. It's always 34.95 a month. Yeah. Okay. Whether well, they're paying a hundred like, bucks, whether they're paying twenty bucks to start, whether it's fifty bucks, it's always going to be thirty-five ninety-five a month. Okay, got it. Okay, and that now, is now they can buy the credit repair by itself and not have a membership. But I think that's um, I think when it was fifty bucks, I think it was like ninety-nine ninety-five, but it's only the credit repair. It doesn't include any of the other services. Okay. Are those services that are offered with the membership, are those like free trials and then you start paying extra on top of the monthly membership to keep them? Nope. It includes everything that's in your back office. So the cash flow manager, the debt elimination, income shifting, which is income shifting, what I would call the numbers, the second pillar for anchor. So income shifting is when you go and you adjust your W-4 at your job so that you're giving the IRS less of your taxes. You keep it in your check. 80% 80% of people fill out their tax form incorrectly. Right, Most like people, right. And that, and that comes from the IRS. That's not my econ. That's not Matt Moore. That's the IRS saying 80% of you dumbass people are giving us more money than you should be paying us. You're using us as a bank account. You should stop. And it's amazing for the government to say, stop giving us money. But again, people aren't educated. But most people are so scared to owe taxes that they will allow the IRS. Much. Huh? That they pay too much or take out too much taxes. Right. They're so, they're, I, I, owe, I owe taxes, but what does that mean? It meant that I got to spend every day with my son as a business owner, as a stay-at-home dad. To me, it's worth it. Like, yeah. I would like, I would like a grand, 
So that's what, less than a hundred bucks a month? For less than a hundred dollars a month, I got to stay at home as a full-time dad to my son. Or I can go work 40, 60 hours a week and put him in daycare or babysitter and only see him for less time. But I won't owe any taxes, right? It's like, you have to decide what's more important to you. So what my econ does, they show you how to fill out your W-4 correctly. And what most people find is you're either gonna keep, I would say anywhere from 80 to five, $600 a month will come back to your household. If, if you had an extra two, $300 coming in a month, that's money that you can put paying down your debt. You can put it into a business. You can invest it. You can spend it. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's not sitting with the IRS where you're not pay, getting any interest back. Right. Even if you put it in a bank where it pays you like 0.02%, that's even better than having the IRS keep hold of it. That is so true. Is there certain parts of the W-4 that people fill out like wrong or is it just like the whole W-4 in itself? The whole W-4 itself based on your family size and your income and all that fun stuff. Now keep in mind, once, once you become a member of my econ, so here's the cool thing. You alluded to this question earlier. If you just want credit repair and you're a member of my econ, you can still take those tax benefits as if you were a business builder because you have a business. So whether you just want to build a business and don't care about credit repair and income shifting, you're going to pay the same price. It doesn't matter. You're still considered the same. So if you, you know, I have a, a 65, 70 year old woman who just wants credit repair. She, she can still be, she still can write stuff off on her taxes. Really? Because my econ is a business. Once you're a member, you're considered a business that has business expenses. Like you're, wow. like me and her pay the same $35 per month for my econ. That's cool. So all, so when you look at your back office and you see credit repair, income shifting, the discounts on your travel um, and your hotel, the, 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 um, the cashback mall, which is you shopping online and getting paid back for that. All that's included with your membership. That's not extra. Some of it's okay. extra, like the ID protection is extra. The roadside assistance is extra. Um, you know, that's not part of your membership, but um, yeah, the, the stuff that they give you for 35 bucks a month, it, it's a personal finance. Their goal is to get you out of debt, get your credit score to 750 or above, get you out of debt, and then show you how to use that extra money to make more money. Is that 750, 750 like the, is that consort, considered good or excellent credit? So I think uh, like 670, 660 considered average, 700 considered good credit. So 750 would be considered like excellent. And then okay. once you start getting into like the 800s, that's like extremely good credit. Okay, like you hold it all. <laughs> yeah, like it's, if you have something in the 800s, you're going to have no problem at all going into a bank and saying, oh, loan. Okay. And then what is the, you said that there's three different anchors. What's the second one? So I would say credit repair, income shifting, business opportunity. Okay. Those are the three pillars of my econ, meaning those would be the three biggest draws of why you would want to talk to them about my econ you're not going to talk about the cash flow manager or the debt elimination or the cashback mall um there's even like you can even buy coffee and like health stuff through my econ like they have supplements but that's not going to be the reason why i talk to someone about, about my econ i'm going to talk about credit repair income shifting and in the business opportunity with the income shifting, how would you explain that to somebody who does, who's like brand new to all of this? I would say, so um, let me, um, I'm going to pull something up and I think I've shown this to you before. So I'm looking through, I'm going to look at, pull up a picture for you. Okay. And then I'll share my screen, which is the cool thing about Zoom is you can actually share your screen. That's awesome. Um, While you're doing that, you said that you've grown a book through Canva as an ebook. Yeah. Did, when you did that, did you type your manuscript in, in Canva or did you copy and paste from like Word document or Google Docs or something? Um, typically, I'll write it first and then uh -huh. just copy and paste it. Um, okay. But it really doesn't matter. It just depends on 
um, what's easiest for you. Some people can just write stuff. I'm not very good on Canva. I use everything. I do everything mostly on my laptop. Um, but let's see here. And do you know, like, what people at my econ? Do you know if, like, people ever did, like, kind of like a maybe like a financial blog that we like that turned everybody back to the my econ website? Or is that like double dipping? I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> a great question. Um, so I'll, I'll answer that like this you're, you're, for the most part, you're part of something called nine to five rehab. So there's lots of different ways to build a business. 99% of people that are in my econ will use a system of some sort to promote my econ, meaning they have what's called a video sales letter, a VSL. So when someone, they'll send out a post like, um, you know, join my business for 1995, get your credit taken care of, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can do this in the search bar on, um, when you get a chance, go to, Facebook and search 1995, um, you know, or 3495 or 4995. And you'll, you'll see tons of my econ posts. Once someone says they're interested, typically someone will send them to a video showing them what my econ is and blah, blah, blah. Because it is, when you have 200 people that are asking questions, you're not going to want to talk to each and every single person, right? It's easier to send someone a video and have the video do the selling and telling for you so you don't have to yeah now, some of my businesses are set up that way some of my businesses are set up so all I have to do is send you a link and you go in you watch the videos the video will explain everything to you so I don't have to but for some of my businesses I like to take the time to actually get to know them because I'm building a relationship with them right now I'm building a relationship with you so that we can build an empire together and mm -hmm. down the line if we want to do something together and work together on something bigger, we already have a friendship. We already have a relationship. We can do that. Right. Right. So I, the reason why I asked that question is where are you at in life right now? Where do you want to be? Is so that I can find out exactly what they need and then custom fit their goals based on what I have. I'm a, basically thinking of my, think of yourself as a grocery store. I have a lot of different products. I don't just have credit repair. I have, I have means to get you financially independent and that's your goal. If your goal is to spend more time with your kids and be hundred percent financially independent, cool. These are my four vehicles to get you there. Which one are you ready to do? Mm, you know, okay. Some are going to be more aggressive. Some are going to be a little bit, take a little bit longer. Like I said, the, 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 the domain company is going to take longer to build. It just is because of how it's structured. It's $10 a month. You make a dollar for every person on your team. It's going to take a lot of people, a lot of time to build that. But I can still teach you and help you build a business through that yeah. as we go along. Whereas if you're in a Forex business or you're in, um, you know, I have high ticket offers where it's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars for like, I have Forex training. That's $497. That's higher ticket but you're probably going to make a lot more money a lot faster. So oh, okay. It just depends on where they're at. You know, I have access to a course that's $1,500. Then if you wanted to, you could resell later, later as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has $1,500 lying around to pay for training, right? Yeah. And not everyone has the self-esteem to be able to sell a, a $1,500 package to someone their their self is their their level of belief is not to that level yet so um i kind of forgot what the original question was but the income shifting and explaining it so i would explain it as job hacking as what job hacking job hacking yeah like hey do you okay. want me to show you how to hack your job Okay. Like, what do you mean? Like, do you know that like, you can be bringing an extra two, three hundred dollars per month, and all you have to do is you don't have to ask your boss for a raise. Okay. Like, you have to. Here's here's how sales is done. You want to, and I think when I made that video for you, I talked about meat eaters. If I if I'm selling steak, I'm gonna go to a meat eater. 
who's hungry. Right. Say, hey, I have some steak because they're already going to be interested. I'm not going to go to a vegan or vegetarian and then have to try to convince them, you know, oh, my steak is so amazing. And they're going to ask all these questions. Look, well, the, I read that the company that, you know, sells a steak went bankrupt 30 years ago. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah, those, those are the type of questions that the vegetarian would ask when I'm trying to sell right. them. Steak, right. Questions that don't make, like, that's irrelevant. So um, when it comes to the income shifting, um, who wants to know how to keep, how to get a raise at their job and keep an extra $300 per month without asking their job, their boss for a raise? People are going to want to know, they're going to ask, they're going to want to know how and why, or they're going to ask for info. And, when and they, they have ask, from there. So when they have information, when they ask um, for information, then it could be simple as simple as, cool, where are you at in life right now? What do you want to be? Oh, I'm working um, a job and it's pretty easy, but I kind of want to do more, you know, Awesome. So you're working in a nine to five job right now. Yeah, I work. Um, I don't know. I work in a call center someplace. Cool. Well, I work for the company called my econ. Um, we do something called income shifting. You ever heard of it? No, I've never heard of it. What's that? Okay, cool. 80% of people overpay on their taxes. We show you how to get that money back, keep it in your household. And then if you want to spend it, invest it, you can. Totally up to you. And that's basically it. I mean, if you think back to when we first started talking about my econ, um, I think earlier this year, possibly last, late last year, like I just kept it simple, right? I didn't show a video flashing cash. It's just like I find out what your pain point is, and I show you how my econ can take care of that pain. Point. Okay, and then the third anchor is going to be the business opportunity. Oh, that's right. Okay, and then how do you explain that? That portion. Um, so that is going to be, um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but um, who wants to be able to, you know, who is on, who on my, who on my friends list as an entrepreneur and is looking for another opportunity or, Hey, my mentor is 36, but retired when I was 34. And he hasn't had a job in two and a half years. Who wants to know how? Oh, I like that one. Like you can leverage other people's success. Okay. Like you don't, like I said, you can be the reporter. You don't have to be the guru. You don't have to have all the answers. You can <laughs> say, you know, I don't know. But Matt, Matt is who you're going to want to ask all those questions to. Okay. Jermaine is a 24-year-old kid who makes six figures. He used to be homeless. So I could write, and you could write this too. This 24-year-old kid used to be homeless. Now he makes six figures. Who wants to know how? Okay. And they reach out and they say, how? Then you can show them a video, right? Because now you're reporting to them. This is the information. The reporter says, this is what I found. The reporter doesn't say, well, let me explain to you how this all works. The reporter says, I'm going to show you what I found. This person has all the information or this video has all the information. Okay, that makes sense. So when it comes to something like my econ, never feel like you have to have all the answers. If someone has a has a question, you can always send them to me because it helps me to have your business explode. <laughs> okay, okay. The more money you make, the more money I make. That's why that's why affiliate marketing and network marketing and MLM are such amazing industries because unless you're helping people and my econ is purse is my econ the way they're comp plan it's not easy to understand but it's structured in a way where if your team is not growing you are not making money you're not growing so it keeps because, you like i like that part about it. it keeps you like it gives you that motivation to keep going like you can't just get comfortable right like yeah. i can't rank up to the next rank unless i help you rank up to the next rank okay because you have people out there that are that are fantastic at recruiting if i go and i just sponsor 100 people i'll i'll make some some nice income from that but i my residuals will suck ass because my residuals will be very low because i didn't rank up 
Mm -hmm. I can you can lit you can you can technically only sponsor three people in my econ and get well, the we highest, hold... and hit the highest rank. Oh, because, okay. you're, because you're helping your team rank up too. Okay, that makes sense. Like the way that like is structured, like for me to hit um E I'm right now I'm E V B cold. In order to be E V P platinum, I can only have twenty people. It's called in, in my I can only have 20 personally sponsored people in my base shop, basically. And then I have to have at least 20 people downline somewhere in my organization, which means my team has to be building, they have to be sponsoring people or I can't rank up. So I have to help you be successful in order for me to rank up. Okay. That makes sense. So that's why it's in your best interest to use me, use Jermaine, um, and all the resources we have to build your business. Like you're never by yourself. It's like a track team. You might compete by yourself, but you're not, you're, you're part of a team that's there to help. Right. You said you haven't worked for like standard nine to five in how long? Um, so I haven't had a job since um, officially September of 2016. Okay. That's when I moved here. To Arizona to take emergency custody of my son um, and I would say I had some things I put some things in I, I had a unique situation because I got emergency custody so basically what happened was my my I lived in Seattle I lived in Washington State but the abuse and everything happened here in Arizona so um, DCS Department of, of Child Safety mm -hmm. gave me custody in Arizona but my parenting plan was based in Washington State. Okay. So the only legal orders I had still had mom as the has having full custody. Um, so I was in a situation where I was in a literal legal limbo. I was given custody in Arizona, but the parenting plan, the only legal orders I have, because when they give you custody, that's not like a legal order. They're just okay. saying, okay, you now have custody of your son. So I immediately filed in Washington to have them alter the parenting plan for me to have custody. The judge said no. The judge said, this is the, everything happened in Arizona. Arizona should be hearing this case. Arizona said, well, everything the Washington it's Washington's jurisdiction because Washington the parenting plans in Washington everything's yeah. in Washington so I was literally in a in a weird ass situation where both states are just like not our problem <laughs> yeah um and I was also found in contempt of court contempt of court in Washington because I wasn't following the parenting plan it was it was just a bizarre situation to be in because the the judge basically said um because obviously my ex-wife immediately filed in washington to make me give my son back um the judge says i'm not going to make dad give the son back because obviously dad is or son is safe but i will find father in contempt of court because he's not following the parenting plan which was bizarre yeah so um yeah that was a, a very intense couple of months um, I spent about three grand on my attorney from September to November because my ex-wife kept filing stuff in Washington state. And it literally got to the point where the judge was just like tired of, of dealing with it. Um, where they wouldn't even, they, they would, they would go to the court, they would set a hearing and then nothing would even happen because the judge was like, I don't want to deal with this. Cause they kept complaining. They would file the stupidest things. Like I left my car in Washington state. So they would file and they had like a private investigator take pictures of my car and file it in, in court and say, oh, see, he still lives in Washington because his car is still here. He hasn't changed his address yet. He still lives in Washington. So you guys need to give the son back to me. You need to give my son back to me. Every time an uh, attorney has to read a letter or send you something to respond back to in court or appear to court, you're charged for that. I honestly, I think he was doing it more to drain me of, of money, but um, yeah. So that was a, a an inter that was an interesting time period in my That's life. But, but ultimately, um, 
February of 2017 is when I had more residual income and I had residual bills. So okay. that's when, I, and I left my job because um, I basically was here in Arizona. Um, I consider bringing, I was going to move here regardless. I just wasn't going to move here that soon because my sister was having a baby. My mom was babysitting my other sister's kids. And I was like, you know, my son was being abused. So I was going to move here regardless, just so that I could be closer to be closer to my son and help out my mom with babysitting and stuff like that. Cause I was already looking at doing freelance work. Um, so I could not have to work a job. Cause I, I'll be honest, I hate jobs with a passion. I really hate jobs. I, I've the only job I've ever really enjoyed was blockbuster. And that's because I loved movies. I love talking about movies. Like I'll talk movies all day long with people. Oh. And like, I would go into work on my days off and hang out with my coworkers and, and stuff. So like, I love movies outside of that. I hate jobs. I think it's, it's like akin to slavery. You know, personally, that's just me. Some people love what they do and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I would question, you know, do you really love what you do or do you love it because you have to? Because most people, if they won 50 million in the lottery, aren't going to stay at their job. But some people will say, oh, no, I still have my job. I won the lottery. Maybe. But I, I doubt that they would. Right. I love my job, but Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays are my favorite day of the week. <laughs> so I think... I think it just goes back to you can you can love what you do you can enjoy what you do don't get me wrong but i i do not love a job more than my future wife and i don't love my job more than my kid my son i'd much rather spend time doing what i want to do than be at a job that i love quote unquote that makes sense i'd You're rather definitely an inspirational person what was yeah. that I said you're definitely an inspirational person. I try to be when I can. <laughs> I'd say I had I had a lot sewn into me by my mentors when uh -huh. I was younger. And so this is, you know, one of my ways of paying it forward to people. Um, you're lucky because I'm I'm actually gonna start charging for my time and my mentorship and my coaching and stuff. Like I I I, that. I honestly I I I've never charged for coaching. Usually it's, you know, even people that are in my econ and I've coached them and helped them. They're not even in my business. I'm not getting paid from their efforts and building a business. I still take time to help them and coach them and stuff. Um, you know, I remember my mentor, he's a multi, multi-millionaire. Drove from, from Seattle, Washington to Portland, Oregon to do a house meeting for me. It's about a five-hour trip. And I end up, not, I end up having a no-show. So there's no one there. For them to do talk to about the business and he just spent like two hours just mentoring and loving on me and, and just being a friend you know wasn't upset like oh you made me drive here five hours and you couldn't even get a person here it wasn't like that at all it was just cool we get to spend two hours just chopping it up and i get to mentor you and ask questions and then he drove five hours back up to the seattle that's like awesome. that's the type of mentorship that i grew up with okay know? and so i understand that i may not get m money up front for it like if i help if someone's in my econ and i help them make money in my econ what are the chances they're not going to trust me to join me in another opportunity probably pretty high so i understand that there's always going to be something coming in the back end but honestly, at this point, with what my goals are for the year and where I want to be and put my son, like, I honestly, the stuff that I've been giving you, I could charge hundreds for. <laughs> I could charge $250 an hour for stuff I'm, I'm teaching on. And so it's, it's time for me to start giving value for that. So, but if someone's working with me in business already, like, I'm not going to charge them, you know. And it just depends. Like I got a gentleman yesterday, or he reached out to me recently. It was like, Hey, will you be my mentor? Um, type thing. Um, literally he said, will you be my mentor? It's like, sure, but it's, it's going to cost you my time because my time mm -hmm. is precious. 
too, right? right? Like I, if I'm going to spend two, three hours with you teaching you how to, how to visualize and, and do all these things, like now you're going to pay me for it because I deserve to be paid for it. Absolutely. How much are you going to charge like by hour? Um, I think I had it to, um, I think I might do something similar to where it's like, if you want to just send me an email with like 10 questions and I answer them, it'll be like 50 bucks. If you want okay. an hour of my time, it'll be like a hundred bucks. If you oh, want okay. three hours, okay. it'll be 250. Like, um, like I had a really good, um, and I actually found that from someone else actually. Let me see if I can find it. I was reading on a website and he had coaching and I saw how much he was coaching. I'm like, damn, I like how it's set. So he does $150 for a 30 minute coaching session, 250 for an hour or $50 for like a, for 10 questions. Okay. So if you want to spend an hour with him for coaching it's 250 hours or $250. Yeah. Um, and so for, I guess for me, it would depend on what they want to learn. But I think $100 for an hour is totally fair for yeah. what I've learned over my years of, of being around millionaires and success and not having to have a job for you know, two years. And now I'm working with Jermaine. Jermaine is further ahead than I am. You know, he's made a quarter million dollars online and he's 24. I'm 36. You know, that's the other thing. You should never be... You should be humble enough, you know, to submit yourself to someone that has what you want and they're further along 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 the lines of where you're at. Submission has a really bad connotation in our society. You know, like I believe this is just me personally, I believe that a wife should submit to her husband. That doesn't mean that she's beneath him. Right. He's submitting to submission. Right. It means he makes the decision. I'm in submission to Jermaine because Jermaine has knowledge that I want, I need. You know, every man should be in submission to a greater man, in my opinion. Because everyone should have a mentor. Everyone should have someone that's further ahead. Even King David had mentors, right? With the prophet. They can say, hey, um, you're, you're screwing up right now, bud, <laughs> right? King, D even, even Moses had mentors. Yeah. Right? So if someone that has spoken to God one-on-one -on -one still needs mentorship and a team of people, just saying, I'm, I'm never going to be anywhere near Moses. And King David is, is probably my biggest um, fan in scripture. And even King David, like I said, had a mentor or someone to say, hey, you may not want to do that. You're going to F up your life if you, if you continue down the path you're going down. So yeah. even, even they were in submission. That is so good. So if I, I had a like yeah, see, I'm I'm giving you thousands of dollars worth of knowledge today. It's a good thing it's recorded. I know. <laughs> I if appreciate there, it though. Thank you so much. If there was a 12 year old kid that was that had a skill set or something that I wanted to learn how to do, you know, I am I have my ego is to the level where I can submit myself to a 12 year old kid, where I can learn what he knows. So that I can go further ahead in life. Like mm -hmm. some people are like, oh, I don't want to learn from that person, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Donald Trump, he's all these things. I don't want to learn. Okay, well, if Donald Trump is going to offer to teach you how to build a business. Hey, within that, that's ethical and moral and all that good stuff. Um, like at some point, you have to submit your ego to learn from someone that's further ahead of you. Um, yeah. Donald Trump, that was just kind of an extreme example. but I understand that point, though. <laughs> Yeah.
So yeah, I just looked at the time and it's been like two and a half hours and I really, really do appreciate it, but I don't want to be stingy with this time or take too much time. No, nope, so this is totally I, fine because I'm investing into you. Like that you're already working with me in business and you have big goals and you have like there's this is an investment. Like I know I'm gonna get something out of it. So don't worry about time. Like I'm good for I'm off today too, so I'm, you're off every day. <laughs> I went to the movies yesterday, so like I can, I, I I'm good. What movie did you see? I went and saw Spider-Man: Far From Home yesterday. How was it? Um. Well. Um. Tough question because I'm. Uh, I watch movies differently than, than most people. You're I, like a movie critic. I am to an extent. Um. Are do you like the Marvel movies? Do you like uh, the Marvel? Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat? Okay. So Tom Holland, who plays Spider-Man, I feel does very well with an ensemble cast. So when he did Captain America Civil War, fantastic. He was fantastic in all the Avengers movies. But when he's in his own standalone movie, I feel like he can't hold he can't carry a movie on his own. Oh, okay. So Spider-Man Homecoming, I didn't really care for it, but it had Michael Keaton. I grew up in the 80s. Michael Keaton, to me, will always be Batman. I love Michael Keaton. So I like Homecoming for that reason, but I don't like Homecoming. Okay, Far that makes Home sense. wasn't bad, but I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not a fan of Tom Holland, but he works very well when he's not the main character. He works better as, okay. a, as a side character to the Avengers or to those bigger characters. So... Um, and, and this is going into movie history, Sony, not Marvel, owns the rights to Spider-Man. So Marvel can't really make a Spider-Man movie. Sony still owns the rights. So if you look at the Sony Spider-Man movies, besides the Tobey Maguire, the first two Tobey Maguire movies, Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Venom, they've all been trash. They've all been garbage. And that's Sony doing it not marvel so oh. i met, so i would suspect that if marvel had full control they, they, could, so they could different yeah they could make their own because when marvel i don't know if tom holland just isn't good by himself or if he's really good when he's in a marvel movie made by marvel because when he's in a marvel movie marvel you know they're the ones calling all the shots mm -hmm. when it's a standalone movie because marvel doesn't own the rights to spider-man sony does so marvel actually has to sony has to allow spider-man to be in the avengers so That's when you true. have um a sony spider-man movie the quality is not going to be as high even if they partnered with marvel you know because it's still part of the marvel cinematic universe but it's still sony making it so that's just my opinion and my take on it but uh, I'll, I'll go see another Spider-Man movie, you know, because um, I think it's an iconic character. But I may not um, enjoy it as much as um, the other Marvel movies. That makes sense. That's good. Have you ever thought about, like, doing, like, movie critics? Or, like, movie um, reviews? I've thought about it, but I just, I haven't really... I, I'm not, I don't like to write. I actually hate to write. So a video would, would be better, but I feel like me playing off of someone else would work better. Like I did a, um, last year I actually met a tender date at Starbucks. Like we only met one, one time because she was in town from out of state. Like she was from Wyoming visiting her, her mom. Um, and we met up at Starbucks and we literally spent six hours talking about moving some comics in the film industry and, and Marvel movies and like complete stranger, but we talked for six hours. Yeah. And I, I literally could spend all day talking and watching movies and then critiquing them and so on and so forth. So having, doing like a, a movie channel where I'm talking about movies with someone else, uh -huh. uh, I think would work a lot better for what I, for what I do. I think just sitting in front of a camera giving my opinion on movies, I don't think I'm boisterous enough or, you know, I don't think I have a personality 
to draw enough people for that. And I'm totally fine if this is where we need to, to stop. Yeah, please, I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> um, well, or if you have other questions that you want to rattle off real quick. I know I'm trying to like think before, that just threw me off guard, that's when off the guard, but that's when my neighbors, but that was just like random, sorry. So just okay. like mentioned my train of thought. No, that's um, fine. What other questions do I have? Um, yeah, I, I thought you had like a meeting. Like honestly, I thought you were like at Starbucks in a parking lot. Oh no. <laughs> um, but no, I'm I'm fine. Um, still going. If you. I don't think going. I have any more questions though, because I wrote down everything and that's everything that I wrote down. The watch. As soon as I get off, I'm like, oh, I should have asked you this, and then it's right. gonna come to me. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Just send it to me over Messenger, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Okay, thank um, you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Let me, I'll go through a few things with you um, while I have you on the phone. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. And actually we'll do this.